Okay, so now that we have our geometry imported into the Maya scene, we can now begin the process of setting up lights. Alright, so for this final rendered image, what I want to try to do is kind of have the camera framed up roughly like we have right now. Now I want to start to get some good illumination on this front side of his geometry, as well as some nice backlighting. And then we also kind of want to start to get a little bit of uh, kind of fill illumination right in this area. So for this, we could really start with just a very simple uh, three-point light setup. And this is really kind of a good starting point for really any kind of lighting setup or any kind of character lighting setup. So to start this, let's begin with setting up my uh, key light, my primary light. So for this, let's just go to Create, Light. And a good light for our primary or our key light would be a directional light. All right. So here it is here. Now if I press 7 on my keyboard, you will see that this directional light really does not rely on being at any kind of a location. So this directional light really does not emit light from one particular source. Instead, it tries to simulate lights that come from infinity across into our scene. So it really kind of acts like a directional light, or just so, sort of a uh, sunlight. And you'll see that even if I pick up this light and move it, it has no effect whatsoever on the lighting of our scene. Really the only thing that affects the light is its rotation. Alright, so with that in mind, we really don't necessarily need to take this light and pick it up and reposition it, but I still kind of find it useful to take this light and sort of roughly position it uh, kind of where I want it because it does kind of help me to visually see roughly kind of where that light is and uh, where it should be coming from. So I kind of like to use it just as a strict a visual reference for myself. So let's start with sort of a uh, direct light in right in here. There we go. So that'll give us sort of a uh, sunlight, sort of a feel. So we can kind of start to get some light coming from this direction. Now let's also uh, go into this light and we'll make sure that we do have shadows enabled. Although we won't actually be able to see these shadows just yet. You'll see that if I actually were to simply hit render right now at this point, that we can actually see the light, but we don't have any shadows. So what we want to do is switch the renderer from Maya software to Metal Ray. All right, so we'll be using Metal Ray as our renderer from this point. There we go, and now we can start to see some shadows coming from this directional light. All right, and that's exactly what we want. So let's now start to fill this in by adding some of our secondary lights. So let's go to Create, Lights, and for this, I find a point light is kind of a good light to use for your backlight and your fill light. There we go, so this will be, again, kind of our fill light, so we'll kind of bring this back. There we go, and just start to get a little bit of lighting that happens back in here. But we need to, uh, at any time, start to tweak this light. We can do that very easily, but for now, we'll just kind of focus on rough placement. Again, for this one, we'll use Ray Trace Shadows, so we can start to get some nice shadowing effects in here. And we'll also start to give this light maybe a little bit of coloration, just to uh, sort of set it apart from some of these other lights. So we can start with something a little bit on the red side. There we go. Now let's start to add our backlight into this. Again, a good light for the backlight would be something like a spotlight or a point light. In our case, we use the point light. There we go. So this one will try to pull fairly far back behind. Alright, and we'll take a look at this from the opposite side. And again, just kind of see how this looks. There we, go. we can sort of see how this is going to look here in our perspective view. Again, for this light, we'll start to give it a little bit of variation in the color. Maybe something a little bit more on the blue side. Again, just to kind of give a little bit more drama to this scene. Start to add a little bit of variation in this light as well. And we'll also make sure that this light has some ray trace shadows. Alright, so let's see what we have so far. Alright, so once we render this out, this is roughly what we get. So you can see now that we do have our primary light. Again, that's kind of sort of coming in from this front area. Just a little bit of backlight that's being provided by this blue light. And just this uh, fairly soft fill light that's coming in here. Now as far as the shadows go, you can see that these shadows do look very, very rough as far as them all being very, very sharp. Now we can start to come in and soften these out, but doing so will start to add quite a bit of render time. 
So before we start to focus too much on the shadows, what we want to do is really start to focus on the materials themselves. And then, once we have the materials in place, then we can start to come in and tweak things like the shadows. Again, just to keep our render time as fast as possible in these early stages where we're going to ha have to uh, make quite a few adjustments. Now, one thing that we can do, as far as starting to now add just a little bit more visual quality to this, is we can start to come in and now add some final gather. All right? So, in order to do this, we first need to make sure that we do have some kind of an environment set up, so that way we can actually have something to bounce these final gather rays around. So, a quick and easy way to do this is to just simply go to your camera. So, just go to View, Select Camera. And now, let's take a look inside the environment. And let's start to give this... Uh, some sort of a background color. So sort of a 50% gray should work. And let's go over to indirect lighting in Metal Ray. You should find this if you're using Maya 2009 or higher. And inside the indirect lighting we can now enable Final Gather. Alright, so just to uh, kind of visually see the difference, here's what we had before. If we want we can save that for comparison and now see what we have after adding Final Gather. All right, excellent. And you can now start to see how that can start to add the effect of a little bit of secondary illumination here. Just sort of some uh, additional lighting that can kind of help fill in some of these dark spots. So this is kind of a good starting point as far as the overall lighting goes. Uh, what this will now start to give us the opportunity to do now is start to apply things like subsurface scattering. And we can start to, if necessary, uh, kind of come in and start to tweak the light positioning, tweak the light colors, intensities, and again all trying to keep our renders as fast as possible while we're doing these uh, very, very heavy modifications. So this will be a good point to stop, and in the next lesson we'll start to begin the process of applying materials to some of these different areas of our scene.